Okay, for those patients who are maybe a little bit further on past any early precautions and the range of motion of the wrist flexion and extension is just not getting better at the pace we would like, a lot of times a doctor will request or we can ask for a static progressive splint. And a static progressive is when we put it at a set load and leave it there in a splint that is adjustable. Dynamic is when it's a rubber band tension, so as they improve, it improve, it, it continues to have some tension. Static is you put them under load, and if they relax into it, they would need to then advance that further. So it's a static load. In this case, we'll use some monofilament, but we're going to make this splint and kind of show you eh, kind of a quick and easy way to make it. You can order them from companies like Dynasplint or Lance Medical or some of those that are a prefabricated or an off-the-shelf version that they kind of customize. Those are dynamic versions. This is a static. Research shows static does a little better, but sometimes, like if I want to go both directions, sometimes those options work a little better because they have uh, a little bit more bulk and mechanics and stuff to it than we can do with this. But let's see what this looks like. First, I'm going to make the forearm piece more of a sugar tong style. So hold your arm up here for me, and I'm going to make this that comes up around, and we'll stretch this a little bit, that comes around more like a sugar tong than a Munster, right? Like comes up on either side, but it's going to stop proximal to that wrist crease. That keeps it from migrating distally when I put tension, because not just pulling this down, it's going to pull a cuff up, but anchoring it behind the elbow when they're wearing it a couple of times a day, not, not living in this thing, but that anchors it and keeps it from migrating distally. Okay, and then also that's what this piece will be. Okay, and this piece is going to be a hand cuff. And so what I'll do, I'm going to put this in first. Okay, so this is going to be ulnar based, and I'll wrap this around from distal to that wrist crease and wrap it around her hand like a taco, right? Ulnar based. I can make it radial based if I want, but then I got to cut a thumb hole in it and then it's extra measurements and maybe I got my thumb hole wrong. If I go ulnar and put the straps through the first web space and around that snuff box, that's just a quicker, easier fabrication for me. So I'm gonna put this in, but far enough away that they don't stick. Okay, we've pulled it out of the heat. I'm gonna let it cool a little bit and then I'm gonna put it under her elbow and draw it up. And you can see I got a little stretch with this, so I can kind of keep it up there. I want to make sure it's under that volar wrist crease, and I'm going to come along and just do some tags, just to make sure it follows the contour of her forearm, okay? And I want to keep her forearm in, excuse me, her elbow in a 90 degree angle so that it captures this well. If the patient starts to drift out, it, it can still migrate out as it travels past. So we'll wait for this to cool enough that I can unsnap it. If I pull too early, um, it stretches and, and deforms a little bit. Also, I didn't put a black sock on her for visibility so you guys can see what we're doing a little better, but I would always put a stockinette on a patient just for their comfort with the heat, but Miranda's tough, she's used to it. All right, so now that's cooled all the way, I can untag it and pull it off. Sometimes you need to mark it as you get more comfortable. You may not need to put lines and, and, and marks on it to cut. I'm basically going to trim so it's far enough away edge to edge that it's not going to pinch her skin. But it can ride a little high. This is just for use three times a day for about 30 minutes initially. And then as the patient gets more tolerant and they improve, they can tolerate a little bit more wear time, maybe up to an hour. And then I'll say, hey, if you hit an hour, maybe two times a day, because then you're at two hours and that's still a lot of time. So this does not need to be something that's so comfortable they can wear it all the time. Instead, this is more of a exercise type splint. It's just a good, good stretch. And I tell patients this kind of stretches the way that we kind of do in the clinic, but you can take it home with you. So I'm gonna round my corners there. Okay, let's see what that looks like on her again. So I pull this up here and I've got a good amount of space so it's not gonna pinch her skin. Same thing here, a good amount of space there and we'll put some straps on there and that will hold that tight. But I hold off on my straps because I'm gonna have a line of pull down here that I'm gonna make sure I don't block by putting straps across. Let's make that hand piece next though. Okay, so now we're gonna make the handcuff. She's gonna come back up here again. And again, I'm gonna stay past that wrist crease and I'm gonna come tag it through that web space. And then again down here, kind of around that snuff box, just a little tag down there. 
And I don't even need to tag it here. The more I tag, the, um, the harder it is to, um, to untag it and it deforms and kind of changes all those shapes. So give a little space to those fingers. I'll tell them to just kind of give me a little bit of room there. Um, so that's good. So it's not compressing their fingers too tightly. We came up to about the level of the PIPs and I can kind of pull that a little bit more so that I can take my monofilament line and pass it through a hole in the front and a hole in the back. That gives me a more distal line of pull than if I were to anchor something down at the palm or the back of the hand. This also allows me to take something that is a flexion load, take it around and make it an extension load because it can go either direction as it loops through. So that's kind of a nice option to have. I could go all the way out to the fingertips and if we make a line of pull in flexion, that comes from further out that gives me a better moment arm, a better leverage force on there than if I do something at the palm. It kind of ends up using a little bit more material. It gets a little bit less comfortable on the patient. So we kind of made this one just at the level of the PIPs. It kind of functions the same. There's some, you could argue that it should be further out. It's kind of a personal preference as a therapist. But now that that's done, I will untag this. Okay, take that off and we're going to trim that one down too. Again, didn't necessarily need to make lines on there. I'm just going to follow the general kind of contour of that. And I like to cut where I'm not leaving the jagged edges of the holes super visible there uh, or on the edge. So that even if I don't put a line there or uh, an edge there, it doesn't, uh, it's not a, a jagged point for them. And sometimes even the edging, you can feel that jaggedness through and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to cut that right at the level of that hole there, okay? So let's see what that looks like on her again. Okay, so that's past the wrist crease. We'll put a strap here, a strap here, and we'll put the forearm piece on. Let's see what some of those straps look like. Okay, so we've got some straps on it now. Let's kind of see what we've got. Because it goes around the back of the elbow, I don't have to do a ton of strapping. I have two straps, proximal and distal forearm. You can see I put dots here instead of going a continuous strip. We like to do that, but in this case, I need this that is a sticky back loop that goes down the center. I have two inch, this one, I only have a single point of pull, so I only need a thin piece of that Velcro that's gonna attach there, so I don't have to take up as much space. Up here, I've got a space through the snuff box and through that first web space, but we're nice and high through there. I'm gonna lower that a little bit. So that's the line of action that we have, and I wanna make sure that we stay clear of that wrist space as it flexes and extends. I'm gonna grab the Velcro that I have that is non-sticky back hook. You can use sticky back and just fold it over on itself. I just happen to grab this. I fold it over at the top before I hole punch it because two layers are more stable than one for tear out. I have monofilament going through it. I'm gonna take one end and feed it through so I have a continuous loop. So I'm gonna see if I can't get that through. I may need to take it off. Let's see if I can nail it. Oh, we got that strap a little high. There we go, there it is, okay. So I pull this through. Now I'm gonna take, and it's hard to see, I know you guys can't probably see on there. I'm gonna take this monofilament line and feed my connector onto it. And then I'll measure to make sure I have the right length before I crimp it. So I take this little itty bitty tube, this metal tube that you get from Performance Health or North Coast or any of those places. And I'm gonna create a loop with this. And the idea is when I pull her into this position, I wanna get a ballpark of how much length I need in order to pull her where she needs to be. And in this case, we're going with a Palmer one. So if I pull this direction, how much do I need based on her range of motion? So I may need about right there. Well, I want us to have room to grow, so I'm not gonna set it down here. I'm gonna pull it up a little bit, and that's where I'll crimp it. So I'm gonna move it down, and I have the patient hold still. You can take it back off to crimp it. Again, Miranda's tough. She knows how this works, so she's okay with that. So I just take a pair of pliers and crimp that down, and then I'll take and cut those off and throw those away. Then I've got this where I've got this continuous loop and if I want that metal piece out of the way, I can kind of feed it through and bring it to the back or leave it on there. But then when I pull down, it attaches and depending on her level of tightness, it attaches there. And as she gets better, she can pull it further down. And when I first make it, I may put a little line there so she can see her progress, how much further she's gotten than that. If this was a flexion and extension, I would have put the same dots and another piece back here of that sticky back loop that allows me to pull it back this direction. So I'd have a, a piece on both sides that allows me to go one direction or the other. 
when they take it apart, they set the pieces aside, just kind of make sure they're keeping it where it's easy to orient to put back on again. Sometimes I'll put labels on here where things go, but otherwise that is our static progressive wrist flexion and extension orthosis.